Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Racha HaKodash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. All right. And I wanted to do a, a quick response to this video uploaded by the beloved brother Karataza. All right, GMS Vegas. All right, you can see his uh, YouTube handle here, GMS Vegas Sit Downs. All right, Space 144K. All right, make sure you subscribe. All right, so that you can constantly be edified. All right. Um, the title of the video that I'm responding to is "Some of these camps lack humility." All right, and um, before honor is humility, which is true. All right, and he's responding to a video done by. Um, a brother, I don't know exactly if he's in a camp, um, but the title of the video that the uh, brother did was called Hebrew Israelites who force other nations to kiss their boots are wicked. And um, in this video, you had the uh, camp. Um, I don't know. I forget their name, uh, but in times past, they were called Adam Abbott. All right. Um having a uh, heathen bow and kiss their feet okay which is ultimately vain glory but i wouldn't say that it makes them wicked all right ultimately um we're going to go to the scriptures and show how ultimately it's being taken out of context all right because the heathen nations will bow to us once the throne of david is established all right but that takes yahweh returning and getting his glory first all right so really would a nation of people bowing to us in this state, you know, meanwhile, our nation is still deprived. The throne of David isn't established. The whole moral code of this world and the judges that rule this world don't judge by the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. That is in no way a victory. So what it equals to is vainglory. And that's what I wanted to deal with. I understand the sentiment, you know, um, and that's actually something that goes back to the old one west. They would have particular uh, Edomites if they came up, all right, begging for, for mercy, and then they would bow to them and kiss their boot, all right? But once the Edomite left, okay, and the camp was closed up, all right, they may have went to eat, but that next day or the day after that, eventually you would have to go to work, or even if you don't and you have your own business, it's still all in subject to this system, all right? And your nation, all right, is still uh, uh, in a downtrodden state, all right? Those who believe and, and speak the truth are, are targeted, hated. OK, so ultimately, before we have anyone bow to us. All right. Yahweh Shai has to be reverenced and bowed to and all knees will bow when it's all said and done. All right. And that comes with uh, 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 us being joint heirs. Then we'll get that glory. All right. But Yahweh Shai has to return first. So I want to go to the scriptures that these men use. All right. For that purpose and just bring out some edification. All right. Because um, at the end of the day, we don't want to do anything for the purpose of uh, vain glory. All right. I believe that's in the let's see. We're going to bring that out in just a minute. Let's see here. Yep. This is Galatians 5 and 26. It said, let us not be desirous of vain glory, empty glory. OK, it's it's empty at the end of the day. All right. And you may get mad, but this is just a video for the purpose of edification all right if you uh get mad or if you cut by it it is what it is all right it says provoking one another at envying one another all right so let us not be desirous of vain glory what is vain empty okay Let's see if we can look up the uh definition of vain glory all right cannot oxos all right strong g2755 Cannot excess. Cannot excess. All right. Uh, glorying without reason, conceited, vainglorious, eager for empty glory. OK, and we're going to get glory. Don't get me wrong. All right. And we are being glorified by receiving the Holy Spirit in these latter days. All right. But we're not finished. OK, we're not yet finished. All right. We, we, we uh, still have a straight gate to go through. All right. And we have nothing to be proud about. Now, going to the scriptures they use, I'm going to start with this one in Isaiah 
the uh, 49th chapter in the 23rd verse. All right. And it says, and this is a prophecy and this is coming to pass. OK, as a matter of fact, let me just pull it up in its own. It says. Um, let's see. I'll just start at 22. It says, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will lift up mine hand. And who's his hand? His right hand is Yahawashai. Okay. To the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. All right. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers. Okay. And nursing just means to, to nourish. Basically, um, matter of fact, we can just look it up. All right, uh, Aman, basically, to be to support, to confirm, to be faithful. All right, they're going to be servants and handmaids, as the scriptures say. All right, to foster. All right, to make firm. All right, to establish, to carry by a nurse. All right, there's no root word. So they're going to be faithful to us. They're going to. Uh, ultimately be service now it's going to take a period of a thousand years all right to fully instill in them the mindset of keeping our ways and and, and and understanding what we require that it be passed down to their generations all right but there will come a point where they will seek to learn our ways all right so it says and kings shall be thy nursing fathers and queens thy nursing mothers all right and they shall bow down to thee with their face towards the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that I am the Lord for they shall not be ashamed that wait for thee all right and this is a future prophecy this is to come so what men do is they take this part all right about how they're going to bow to us and lick up the dust and they make heathen lick and kiss their boot okay which at the end of the day that ultimately that's not what that's talking about that's a uh We'll get it in just a minute to show you. Uh, that's why you brothers need to uh, understand biblical manners and customs. This is an ancient uh, uh, term for endearment. All right. Because our enemies will be our footstool. All right. We'll show you that as a matter of fact. Now, um, all you have to do is I have the book, Biblical Manners and Customs, but I'm going to just bring up um, what the so-called scholars say. All right. And this is going to be Psalm 72 and 9, which ultimately this is speaking of Yahawashai. OK. And that's ultimately what it says that they're going to do to him. OK. It says they that dwell in a wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies shall lick the dust. This is a psalm for Solomon. But when you read it. All right. It's speaking of Yahawashai. All right. Now, when you go to the part of lick the dust it says the allusion is to an eastern etiquette for prostration before a sovereign now look what does prostration mean okay let's just look it up and you're not sovereign and that's the thing a lot of you don't understand you're not sovereign okay the throne of david is not established it's being built all right but you are not sovereign your law and your moral code is not the one way and only way that uh uh is implemented as law on this earth okay we can't use our laws all right to go into a court system and say well they did this wrong so we were justified and we can't do that we will be able to do that all right once new jerusalem comes down from heaven but that takes your Hawashai coming all right it says uh prostration is the act of lying by stretching on the ground all right a state of being extremely weak of subservient all right uh, weakness but ultimately they're bowing before you and that's a custom that even uh, uh amongst our own people all right going back to the east we would bow to one another all right and licking the dust is symbolic of them being in a state of servitude okay like david all right when the edomites the 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 uh the uh, philistines and the um Moabites became his uh, servants he rejoiced all right as a matter of fact let's pull that up all right okay this is uh Psalms 108 
and nine moab is my wash pot now what is a wash pot all right in ancient customs all right um a wash pot was used to wash one's hands or feet and it was usually servants okay who um carry those things like at the time that um elijah was in, in on the scene elisha when elijah went to wash his hands it will be elisha who came up with the pot so that he can wash his hands all right but the heathen all right will be a wash pot they will ultimately bow all right they will uh, be in a position of servitude that's what that's talking about over edom will i cast out my shoe all right over philistia will i triumph all right what does it mean over edom will i cast out my shoe that means your enemy is your footstool that's all it means all right and this is when David, all right, got the throne of David, right? But this is going to happen on an even larger scale once Yahawashai comes to establish the throne of David on earth as it is in heaven, okay? Let's get Psalms 110. Let's read this. All right. Psalms 110 and 1. All right. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right. Our enemies will be our footstool, man. OK. And let's just look up the word footstool to see exactly what it says. OK, because when you get those biblical um, stool. All right. Just like Esau <laughs> in captivity, he used our people for footstools. All right. Because we were in a position of servitude. All right. Well, in the kingdom of heaven. Our enemies will be our footstool, meaning our foot will be over them. That's why David rejoiced, all right, over Edom will I cast out my shoe, all right, meaning you, they are your footstool, okay? Um, let's go to Psalms 110 here, okay, uh, Psalms 110 and 1, all right, it says, Thy footstool, thy slaves and vassals to be put, all right, all right to be put to the meanest and basest services as this phrase implies all right <laughs> it says being taken it gives scriptures that go into it you can look those up being taken from the manner of eastern princes who used to tread up on the necks of their conquered enemies as we read all right like joshua all right joshua 10 and 24 let's look that up <laughs> let's get that Let's get it in the uh, King James. All right. It says, and it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua and that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of war that were with him, come near, put your feet. OK, up on the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet on the necks of them. So that's an ancient custom. So once Yahawashai returns. All right. And sets up the throne of David. We get new bodies. Our enemies will be our footstool. OK. That's all that that means, man. OK. Um, as a matter of fact. Let's just type in wash pot. OK. It's very important to know these things as well. All right. Because, it, you know. Because walking around the earth, you know, making, you know, the heathen bow to you before Yahweh Shai establishes you is a uh, it's it's pride, man. All right. It's empty. It's vainglory. OK, now I do understand. OK, and when you go to that uh, Moab as my wash basin or my wash pot. OK, we're going to go to the commentary on that so you all can get that real quick. All right. Moab is my wash pot. All right. The wash pot being a mean article of household stuff for the use of the feet. OK. It says the lowest parts of the body. It is a fit title for the Moabites. And it's crazy. They are very good at doing feet and hands. And because that's what ultimately they were created for. All right. To be servants. All right. It says uh, whom David intended to bring into the lowest degree of servitude and render contemptible what was David well, David was a racist huh <laughs> and it, it gives you second Samuel 8 and 2 let's look that up all right it says over Edom will I cast my shoe an old proud insolent and cruel enemy of Israel 
will I cast my shoe. I will use them like slaves. I will, as it were, trample upon them. All right, a proverbial expression. Okay? And you can read the rest, all right? Because, um, let me get here, Second Samuel 8 and 2 in the King James. And he smote Moab. This is what David did. And measured them with the line, casting them down to the ground. And with two lines he uh, measured he to put to death and with one full line to keep alive. All right? So he's setting up all types of torture methods to destroy the Moabites. This is David. And so the Moabites became David's servant and brought gifts. All right. So that's all that means when it says, uh, you know, uh, Moab is my wash pot over uh, Edom will I cast my shoe. It's basically your enemies being your footstool, becoming servants. OK, that's all this means. When it talks about them licking the dust, they're going to be uh, uh, lowly. OK, uh, Micah 7 and 17, they shall lick the dust like a serpent. Now, what did the Lord tell the serpent? He said, on thy belly shall thy, thy go all the days of thy life. All right. And you shall eat the dust all the days of thy life. That's just basically you being the lowest of the low. You're going to be through. OK. And they shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of Yahweh our God and shall fear because of thee. So, yes, the nations will bow to us. All right. But first. All right. Uh, uh, Yahweh Shai has to be bowed to all right and that takes us to the book of philippians the second chapter in the 10th verse that at the name of yahweh every knee should bow all right of things in heaven of things in earth and things under earth now remember we are joint heirs with him you see and that every tongue should confess that yahweh hamashiach is lord all right to the glory of god the father and that's what all nations will be forced to do even our own people are going to do that all right. The ones that rejected the Messiah. All right. Like it tells you in Revelations, the third chapter. OK. Uh, Revelation three and nine. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and, and are not, but do lie. And this is speaking of Jake. We use it for Esau as well. But this is really speaking of those wicked Israelites. All right. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship at thy feet. All right. Now, worship is ultimately a high level of reverence all right now why ain't these people going to hell and when are they going to worship at the feet right, it's once Yahweh Shai is established in the earth our people are going to have a high level of reverence all right towards uh their leadership and that's an ancient custom as well to where we would you know when you saw a man of nobility you would bow to him you know in this time we've grown up in this destructive culture all right, so to have reverence for another man and order and respect are looked down upon, even in Israel. All right. But that's a, a, a custom of ours and even our own people. All right. They will bow and, 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 and at, the, at the knee of Yahweh Shai when it's all said and done. All our people. OK. And the heathen. OK. But the heathen will be in a position of servitude, whereas Israel. All right. Will be um, rulers. OK, but there will be a uh, an order, a ranking system. OK, that's, it's always been that way. All right. That's why the king, the, the kingdom of heaven, when Yahweh Shah describes it, those who taught false doctrines, it, it's uh, said that they would ultimately be least in the kingdom of heaven. And that's least in affairs in rank in order. All right. In the issue and out of judgment. OK. They'll just be Israelites. They'll be blessed. They'll have the laws written them, but they won't be in a, on the level of their leadership, which they will be forced to reverence, not forced, but they will because they will come back when they're born into the kingdom of heaven in their right mind. All right. And they're going to know who the, the, the top leaders are under Yahweh Shai, which is the 144,000. So as the scriptures say, Matthew 12, uh, uh, 23 and 12 it says whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted all right so we have to wait upon yahweh to send yahweh shy before we get that type of glory the fact that you're having heathen bow to your you and lick your feet when you're still in a position to where your nation all right and the throne of david is not established the law statutes and commandments are not respected you're not sovereign that just shows that you're chasing after vainglory, all right? 
And uh, ultimately, whoever was edified by this, you're edified. Whoever's going to continue in doing that, hey, do what you do. All right. But um, at the end of the day, there's no glory in that. All right. The glory in is in teaching the word, remaining humble. All right. And waiting on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That's why the scriptures say, therefore, wait upon me till I rise to the prey. All right. Wait, therefore, upon me. We have to wait for the Lord. To send his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. And when we're delivered, we get those new bodies, we're crowned, and we come down, New Jerusalem being established on earth as it is in heaven. Then, all right, the, these nations will uh, bow to us. Then we can execute judgments based upon the law, statutes, and commandments. Then we will be reverenced and have that fame. Okay, now we're getting the fame now through the preaching of the word, and there are miracles coming. All right, but ultimately, this scripture about uh, them. Bowing and licking the dust is only symbolic of a servant bowing to a uh, ruler or a sovereign, man, which you're not, okay? So I just wanted to bring that out. Hopefully, y'all edified, whoever needed that. All right, uh, hopefully, you are edified. On to the next. Shalom.